That's awesome. You got a standing ovation and an amen and an arm wave. You made the people come alive. What's that? It was your turn. Yeah. Thank you so much, choir. <clears throat> I, I, I was, I'm going to switch. I think long term, the, the new revised standard version has an updated edition. And it's called the new revised standard version updated edition. Uh, uh, or in shorthand, NRSVUE. You know, they had a revised standard. They had the standard version first, and then they did the revised standard, then they did the new revised standard. So, you know, every, you know, three or four decades, I, I guess they got to update it to a little bit modern language. I have not noticed a whole a lot of differences. But if you're following along and you're in RSV and you see a word or two here or there that's different, that's why, uh, because I think they've tried to modernize the language a little bit and correct some, thing, some things that they thought were errors. So it is Pentecost Sunday, if you haven't figured that out yet, or you missed it somehow. Uh, so we're going to read the story of that, that familiar story to us of the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost from the second chapter of Acts. Listen for the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judas and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, and Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But the others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we come to you this day not knowing how to create revival but may we long for it and may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of every heart be pleasing to you god our savior and our strength amen have you ever been in a room where there were multiple language bees, multiple languages being spoken all at one time have you ever experienced that I have a hard time being in a room where multiple people are having different conversations all in the same language. 
you know, everything that's being uh, said, uh, my brain is just not good at filtering out all those sounds and uh, making sense of them. You know, I have trouble focusing on the conversation I'm having. Uh, and I thought of Pentecost and this like cacophony of sound while I was watching the live stream of General Conference a few weeks ago because this is a worldwide gathering of the United Methodist Church and people are there and they speak every kind of language you can imagine and everything that is said is being translated to to he, into headsets that into the language that the listener needs and so uh i thought well i've got it made because uh, just about everything is being said in english because the conference was held in the united states and you know but sometimes a speaker would stand up and uh, was a person who did not speak english or chose to speak in their native language and then uh, th uh, over the speaker's voice uh, would come an english translation so you could hear both what the speaker was saying the words that were being said low lower volume and then at louder volume the english interpretation on top of it and that you know <laughs> <laughs> that was hard for me to follow and it was exhausting for me just watching the whole conference anyway uh trying to pay attention to you know what was being said and the everything that was going on N not being there in person well, i think it was more complicated too but the, you know the speaker would come to the mic yes this is legislative item number 11527 from today's christian advocate on page 897 the issue is the word pear. The word should read apple, as more people like apples than pears. <laughs> and also, pears have a limited season when they taste delicious. I'd like to make a motion to change that if it is in order, Bishop. I cannot imagine having to listen to the whole Dagum conference being translated from English into my native language. I would have lost my ever-loving mind, I'm telling you. <laughs> I love languages. I love to hear the, the different sounds that different languages make that, you know, different from my own. I love learning the etymology of words because they very often connect languages together. Uh, linguistics is just in general fascinates me. The way people communicate with one another fascinates me. I mean, how can I... It mean one thing when I say it to you, who also speaks English, and you hear me say com something completely different. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> so often, you know, and it's, I don't know. We're both speaking the same language, but clearly we aren't speaking the same language. I think about kids, you know, the Gen Xers and their lingo. Do you have any, like maybe great grandchildren, young people, teens who, very young adults who are speaking slang to you i do not i have to just carry my google and look up the words because i don't i don't know sometimes i can't understand what they mean evidently people uh, had it better figured out in the beginning way back you know after the flood after when noah you know noah's people were populating the the earth uh, in Genesis chapter 11, you know that story, uh, a Babel story. Uh, God got a little concerned because the people had a lot of power. They were getting very powerful, it sounds like. So they just, this descendants of Noah, uh, the, the, this is Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they made bricks and then a city and then a tall tower with its tops in the heavens. And they, they wanted to make a name for themselves so that they would not become scattered over the face of the earth. But the Lord came down to have a look-see of what was going on. And uh, he said, so the Lord said to the Lord self, I think because the Lord speaks in a we, the use of pronoun we. So I, I think that might be the Trinity. Is this the Lord having conversation with the Lord? Um, and they, they, they are one people and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. 
Nothing that they will pro propose to do will now be impossible for them. Wasn't that what the Lord wants for us? No, no. <laughs> so the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they left building off the city. They left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and scattered them over the face of the earth. Now, this story is sometimes interpreted as, as a kind of curse that the Lord brought to the people. Uh, I think we can better understand it as the Lord kind of up pushing the people outside their comfort zone. You know, they're all together and they're not doing what the Lord had instructed at the very beginning, which was to what? multiply and and fill the earth yeah so they're not doing that right oh y'all forgot too okay <laughs> um so it is from here from babel from this scattering of the people that all the nations of the earth will come you know if you follow the story along in genesis uh, the drama of history unfolds from this point um all the nations all the tribes of israel every everything comes because of this scattering so fast forward a few thousand years because we all want to go to lunch eventually and you don't want me to tell the whole story right <laughs> so um where they're, they find, we find these remnants of the Jesus followers. In the chapter before, it says there's about 120 of them. And they're huddled together in a room. And it's perhaps on a day not unlike this one. It's a bright and sunny, happy day. Perhaps they're worshiping together. Uh, they may be having a conversation about what to do next. They're, they're making some plans. Uh, we know this because in the chapter before they have elected a person to take the place of Judas who is deceased so no one knows uh, exactly what they have decided to do next we don't have that part written down uh, but from nowhere uh, and everywhere all at once there is this sound uh, a, a violent wind the scripture says a big wind a tornadic wind you ever heard that sound of that screaming roaring sound howling big wind and something like flames of fire start dancing around the room and they light over each person's head a little flame a tongue and before the people know it they're out on the street and they're among people who are from everywhere all over the earth as we heard this long list of of people from all nations all the known world people are there on the streets and they these people start speaking the languages known to all humankind every language <clears throat> the jesus people are telling the story of jesus love his act of death and resurrection and all of this speaking in the language that each one can understand in their native tongue like imagine as we were listening to people speak in other languages imagine suddenly being able to speak portuguese or urdu <laughs> or romanian or cherokee That'd be cool wouldn't it really drives home what Jesus tells the disciples in the 12th chapter of Luke don't worry the spirit will give you the words you need at the time you need them it's exactly what is happening the spirit is giving the words way to show up and show off Jesus that's <laughs> impressive it's funny to me in the light of all of this when I hear someone react to hearing a language that they don't understand that they don't speak like it's a threat or something <laughs> it's, it's america speak english um, and that you know it cracks me up because i mean god created the languages right we read it god created all the languages and it's powerful to hear all of those languages being spoken at once just just like at Babel just like at Pentecost St. Augustine 
one of the fathers of the church. We get a lot of our theology from Augustine. He wrote in The City of God, he says that a common language makes it easier for people to conquer and control others. Isn't that right? Because a common language sort of flattens differences and it sort of, sort of smooths us out and it makes creating a national culture easier uh, along with the expectations that go with that of national pride. It makes governance more efficient and political speeches more impressive. Can you imagine a politician and all the people having to get it interpreted in all their languages like at general conference? And you know, and language doesn't always translate well from one language to another. Words are not the same in every language. It just doesn't always come across the same. We, we lose something a lot of times in interpretation. But we see here in Acts that the Spirit communicates in every language. Every dialect is holy to God. Every language is consecrated by God. Peter quotes Joel, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. On all people, not some of the people, not the people who speak Hebrew or Greek. All the people. Not just the rich people, not just the old people, not just the male people, but all people. People of every nationality, of every language, male and female, Jew and Greek, young and old, on every one, Peter says. And, and then he says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved everyone. The Spirit of God is the ultimate unifier. And Pentecost is the premier example to us of what can happen when the Spirit moves. And I say regularly that we need a fresh move of the Spirit. Sometimes we say, we need revival. We need, you know. But it's the movement of the Spirit that the world, especially in the United States, I think we're crying out for. But, but I do wonder when I'm thinking at my best, if what we're hoping for is not so much a Pentecost experience as just an infusion of energy into the church as it exists. Because we don't really want the Holy Spirit to come and fill us and us go running out into the streets, right? That's not what we're praying for. Be because a real Pentecost moment that would change everything, wouldn't it? A Pentecost moment doesn't ask the world to come in to the church. That's not what happened. A Pentecost moment requires the church to go into the world. The Jesus people get on the streets. It requires people to learn a new way of speaking, a new language. It requires the Jesus followers to get off the pews. <laughs> Where people will say we are drunk or out of our minds or senile or naive or overly exuberant or dare we say pushy we all speak a common language and when is the last time that we told someone who wasn't already a christian about the great things that Jesus has done for us. So, I'm going to put this away and say something different than what I was going to say. Because a little while ago, when I was walking around with the mic and you guys were speaking your different languages, my phone was ringing. And I have the Fitbit that tells me who's calling me and I didn't look at it at the time, but then I got a text and I thought, you know, something might be up. So I glanced down at my watch and it was my daughter-in-law. My son is getting a new phone and he's on the phone plan. And he needed, the phone people want to do a three-way. They have, they have the passwords and all that, but that wasn't good enough. The, you know, phone people, that's good. They want to be safe. They want to make sure I'm authorizing this. But I didn't respond. And a few minutes later, my daughter-in-law wrote, NM, never mind, that means never mind, NM, I just realized it's Sunday, I roll emoji. <laughs> you, 
Y'all, how many of your kids or grandkids are out there today? They just, church is not on their radar. Sunday is not on their radar. And it's not even about that. It's about Jesus is not on their radar. Because it's not about how many people are filling the pews. I know we want, you know, 300 people here every Sunday. But what, what we really need to want is Jesus' infusion into the lives of the people who don't know him. My son knows Jesus. <laughs> His wife doesn't. The world is hungering, not for church. I think church will come. But the world needs the Holy Spirit. The world needs to know Jesus. We need a movement, a Pentecost movement. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.